My name is Gianluca Zanna. I was an Italian by birth and I became an American by choice. Our lives and freedoms are in danger. This is not a dream. If you're listening to this broadcast, you are the resistance. Welcome to Love, Guns and Freedom. We're not here we go, another Sunday, another show. You're listening to Love, Guns and Freedom with Luca Zanna on K Talks 1340 AM and also 104.1 FM. Uh, last Sunday I wasn't around, uh, as you can remember, probably, um, was a repeat show. Uh, the reality was that I was a little sick. Um, let's say uh, not feeling well, a little cold, but uh, guess what? I'm back here. Um, it's Christmas, if you believe in Christmas, it's Yule, if you believe in Yule, it's everything you want to believe. That's the bottom line. On this show, you know, I said, I, I don't bring much uh, um, religion. I believe everybody has their own religion. But, you know, for most of us, at least for most of you, uh, it's Christmas. And I don't think people should be feel afraid to call it Christmas. Even if you are, don't believe in Christmas. After all, it doesn't even need to be a religious aspect. It is just a common social aspect. That's the reality. Uh, that's my point. You know, we know that there is, there are many religions out there, and I completely uh, respect uh, difference of religions. Uh, the point is, uh, sometimes there is uh, something that is more than just being politically correct. It's, it's a really an attack on a certain group of people. That's the reality. You know, I have my own beliefs, and I tell you, I don't believe in Christmas. I believe in something else. Uh, but that's my personal belief. At the same time, I have no problems to uh, problem to share with you Merry Christmas. I don't see the problem, you know. Like uh, Jew people, I know a lot of Jews that are out there, they don't believe in Christmas, but, you know, they're not going to have a like heart attack just because they say uh, Merry Christmas. You know, they have a Hanukkah, whatever they call it. <laughs> that's fine. So let's not just be too carried away, please. Now, what I want to talk today is something about very serious. Because uh, we are facing something that I don't know exactly. I don't want to be paranoid. I don't want to be um, overreacting. But there are so many elements that the last couple of weeks, they've been com somehow coming together. If you look at this individually, like pieces of the puzzle, that may be very important, very interesting, and also very dangerous. But if you look at this all together, I don't know, I want your brain, you tell me. Maybe am I too paranoid, but I look at this like something's coming very, very serious. First of all, first of all, economically, we know that there are a lot of signs that we are going to uh, a sort of uh, uh, recession. Uh, economically, a lot of things that are not looking right. Between uh, the Feds or the prior Federal Reserve, the way I like to call it, uh, interest, you know, increasing the interest rates, uh, this sort of uh, oil, prices of oil, and more important, you know, things that they're in motion. They are the same charts. You know, I'm not an economist here. I'm not trying to give you economic advice. But look, I want to play pretty soon like uh, something from former Congress, Congressman Ron Paul. Uh, pretty much sharing the fact that uh, he feels, he feels, he looks as the evidence, as uh, all these signs like going to the same type of depression that we had in the 30s. This is serious. Now, I say something. Uh, we know one thing. Trump, now I will go through Trump and I will go why I really have so many problems with President Trump, especially the last couple of weeks. But one thing for sure seems like, seems like Trump is going to get the, uh, let's say the fall, the, 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 the real, you know, when the economy is going to fall and collapse, it seems, in my opinion, according to the facts here, is going to go under Trump. Now, don't forget, what happened to these economies today is the result, is the result of, uh, let's say, at least 20 years of failures, of politicals, of completely delaying a reality, uh, completely artificially increasing 
uh, this uh, this uh, this death because you know we have this nation first of all as i said the most important thing we want to understand i don't care how much if we spend one dollar or one trillion dollars every dollar we spend is a dollar of debt that's the most important thing till we don't understand the concept that there is a, a, an organization a private organization called in this case the federal reserve that in 1913 was given this some sort of uh, almost God's like powers to create currency out of thin air without any type of backing anymore and charge the American people, the treasury, for each dollar they print or they create now digitally, charge us. You realize that no matter how much we spend, even if we spend one dollar, it's always one dollar or that. So that's why it's so important. That's why it's so vital to understand that we need to, uh, we cannot fix a cancer, just keep pouring, you know, aspirin on, on it. You need to go there and kill the virus and kill the roots of this cancer. And that's the number one thing. So we need to understand that. But now, one thing I tell you, as much I, I still, you know, completely now baffled about President Trump, because the last thing he's done about the Second Amendment is more than just the Second Amendment. It's about the Constitution itself. And I'll go through to this in very few minutes. But regardless, at the same time, it seems like the globalists, or at least the organization that they completely support global government, and among those, the central banks, they try now to pull the rug on the President Trump. So that's something we need to be very aware. We need to be very aware. As I said, there is this uh, little clip. I will get it uh, from Congressman Ron Paul that has been an economist all his life. I mean, he's more than just a former congressman. This man was very much into the economy and understanding, understanding the danger of uh, the private Federal Reserve. Now, why I want to focus on this? Because I tell you, when there is uh, trouble times in the economy, the first one they're going to be a completely sucked in. It's going to be the average person. Um, they are pulling, you know, pulling you in in the in the stock market like a game, like almost like a bleeding game. You know, they let you see a little bit of hope, and then you think you have hope, and bang, you go there and they slice you another piece, and then you go there a little bit of hope, and then they slice you a little bit. Finally. Finally, you bled completely. You're dead. That's the reality. So, and why they're doing that? Because they've done that over and over. Wherever they can somehow um, destroy the market, destroy everything, then they can buy it out for pennies or for nothing on the dollar, almost for free. There is always going to be a comeback. But meanwhile, we are dead. Now, that's, I really believe, uh, it's just more than just another way to destroy America. This is also a part for a global takeover from the New World Order. They need to destroy, they need to create chaos, and out of the chaos, they will create a new order. They call it order out of chaos. So the first thing we need to face now, and I'm really concerned, is this, uh, uh, let's say, economic turmoil that is more than a turmoil. It's, it is in a plan organized disaster. Number two... Is what we call also wars. Yes, uh, I tell you, we need to look at the, all the elements now. We have the Russian government uh, just last week sent some nuclear bombers in Venezuela. You know, you know why? Why you think Venezuela? Because Venezuela, anyway, is now um, with China, Russia, and also Iran part of this alliance to completely, eventually, face the United States. Now, if you think for a moment that uh, we are still the same United States that we were after World War II, like a superpower, like number one in the world, I'm sorry to disappoint you. You know, I love America, but I also know when we need to look at reality, because what's happened here the last 30, 40 years, we've been sold out from our own supposed to be politicians, that they don't work for us, but they work for this global cabal, that their goal is to create global government, and you know how to create global government. You must destroy America. You cannot have any more sovereign nations. Look now at Canada. Canada is the perfect example. They completely following the plan with the, you know, Prime Minister Trudeau. He follow every plan. Now, America still has this sort of a group of people, very strong, 
this generation, even of course the new generation is brainwashed, there is still the core of America. They're not going to ready to go down without a fight. They know it. How you can put down, you know, uh, 20, 30, 40 million people that say, screw that. We're not going to become global citizens. We're not going to give up our citizenship, our sovereignty, our constitution, our bill of rights, our freedoms. And we got guns and we'll fight. Guess what? There is a way. You need to bring occupying troops. How do you bring them? You know, on the soil with a war. A war that must be morally justified. And also, we must be put in a situation to lose. Probably some of you say, look, are you, you're completely out of your mind. I wish. I just tell you, please follow me for a second. First of all, the reality is that now we know our supposed to be technological edge, you know, like we have, uh, uh, the, we had the technological edge, is gone. Why? Because we've been sold out since the 80s from the Clinton administration, China, was able to achieve, to receive, and to steal the most important secrets we have when it comes down to technology, military technology especially. That's a fact. You can see that. Uh, now also they know they created the economic advantage. We somehow, we've been sold out economically to China, like China is our credit card machine. Even when we had to send money to Israel or other countries that they really, we have no obligation, but you know, our politicians decided to do so because an act of treason, in my opinion, why should I give, why should we give $38 billion to Israel? Why we don't have those money? Why they don't go straight to China and rack their credit card? Seriously, even if you are one of these neo-evangelical, you know, supposed to be conservative, and you hate probably socialism, tell me why this is not a global socialism. It is. Okay? Israel is supposed not to be our 51 state. If they are, they're supposed to pay taxes too. They are not. They are the biggest lobby who controls, you know, they control Congress, and they use the money that our taxpayer money that we send down, and then they pay back Congress to lobby. This is a very serious thing. You know, I don't care about Israel. I don't have this problem with Israel. I don't have a problem with anybody. I just say one logic thing. The American people should not be forced to pay a dime to any other nation. I don't believe in socialism in our nation, but if we really had to give money to somebody, I think we should probably give it to us. Okay? For sure we shouldn't give no to other nations. That's the number one thing. So, where I'm going to, right now we have the situation that economically China is also taking over. It's already a superpower. Militarily are a superpower. And not just China. Russia. Don't forget Russia and China, they already have alliance treaties. That they work together in case of an attack. And against who? Against the United States. Then there is, of course, Iran. And then there is also Venezuela. And then there is also Cuba. And then, of course, you have North Korea that is still there. Trust me, you have millions of people that have been brainwashed. That capitalism is bad and communism is, is the way to go. Guess what? They, they are still there. They're still a threat. It's not over. So the reality is, right now, America is in a position that economically is weak. If there is a crash in the next few months, it's going to be a great opportunity for the globalists to move to the next stage. It's going to be war. Why? First of all, because war, in war, you can somehow hide what's going on. You will bring everybody together. You will somehow unify a nation just because of fear. And then, of course, they meanwhile, they stole the trillions. And they can say, you see, now you got to focus on the threat. And more important, the final goal is to lose that war. I'm very concerned, I must tell you. Uh, I've been uh, having nightmares the last few years. I told you probably already in my show, 2001, 9-11. Just a couple hours before, you know, you hear the news, I was sleeping. I was in California at the time. And I had this nightmare that was really very realistic. I was uh, looking at myself in the mirror, or at least I could see myself, and I was in my mid-50s. I wasn't a kid, I wasn't old. I was a little bit more, let's say, grown up. Remember, when I had that dream, it was, I was just 30, 20 years ago. So anyway, and uh, I started to look at the sky, 
and I, the sky was blue out of the blue started to get all foggy like little teeny things coming down from the sky like almost rain instead it wasn't rain I started to move it with my hands I could see them better and they were all paratroopers pretty freaky say okay maybe there's some paratrooping at, at trivities then another flash was on the beach of, of, of somewhere I don't know you see sand, you see the surf, you know, see the waves crashing on the on the on the sand. And I see like boots, military boots. And then I see the water becoming red. Then I see like the flash, a helmet. A man with a helmet, the 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 man wasn't white, wasn't Caucasian, was yellow, or at least was oriental. And then I see a sign. A sign like a, a red wall with four yellow stars. At that time, just let me tell you, I wasn't really that good in, especially knowing the flags uh, of other countries, especially China's flag. And then I realized that was a Chinese flag. Then the last flash was a man dressed as a soldier, he looked like an older guy, probably maybe some national guard. After I tried to look for some reserve, and I also remember the ranks. He had some sort of a ranks like a sergeant, and he had the table, big table. And all these tables, they were all rifles, old rifles, or at least not the typical, you know, M4 or AR-15, military version, M16, whatever. No, they were probably about something that after I learned what type of rifle was. And exactly was a 308 rifle, semi-automatic, with magazine, called also M14. At the time, I had no idea what was an M14. So that was uh, the dream that was my uh, kind of very, very realistic scene 20 years ago. I started to do some research. I started to follow news, articles, journalists, in the, you know, report, independent report. I read a book that I tell you, I, I think I already talked on the show the last few years, from that uh, author that disappeared pretty much from the scene, Silent Invasion by Gulbrandson. And he, he was there. He went down to the southern borders. He found out that in early 2001, 2002, that they were witnessing you know, Chinese and Russian troops already there, stationed in these camps, tried to force, you know, they, they test the, the line of defense, or at least the borders, our porous borders. So that's the reality I really fear as, as, as an American, as a human being. <laughs> That America must be sacrificed. They must put it down. And they don't want to wait another 20 years to somehow let this generation, they still this generation who believes in, in free market, if believes in, in, in the old principles, you know, maybe not everything perfect, but for sure not this new generation of, of millennial that I completely brainwashed, like, you know, the new congressman Cortes or whatever it's her name. That's ready for China. These are ready. They are willing. They are praying. They are welcoming Chinese troops. They want socialism. They want hard Marxists. That's what they are. But they still have this problem. They have us. So how you knock them down, you need to put a nation at war. A war that is morally must be justifiable. Think about the Chinese. We owe so many trillions to the Chinese right now. All they say, we want our money back. We don't pay. Bang. We come and de- take get that collateral, collateral that means us, the land. We, the people, are slaves. That's the reality. And then, of course, our military now has been depleted 20 years in these illegal, unconstitutional wars around the world. Now, look at Trump, what he's doing. He's getting people out of Syria, finally. And I commend them for that. Let me tell you something. You know, it's amazing how all this changed twice. Before the election said, hey, we have no business in Syria. We have no business in Afghanistan. And I agree with him. Seriously, guys. If you think we have to go to every country just because allegedly somebody is doing something criminal, we should become the police of the world. The reality was Syria. I already told you. There's so much evidence. It wasn't about anything about Assad. It was about an oil pipeline. Okay? The people like, you know, these this, this big elite groups... And McCain was behind, and Cheney was behind, and all the other big bankers behind. They needed to go through the air area, the Syria controls. So that's another point. And also don't forget the military industrial complex. If there is peace, they're not going to make any more trillions out of us. So my point, though, is Trump before the elections was right. Same story in Afghanistan. Then after the elections, bang. You know, they put a little false flag. 
the video of these children supposedly gassed. No evidence, no proofs, just because somebody says so. The only evidence we know, though, for sure, that these white helmets, they were funded by the Obama administration. That, you know, we have one million of, 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 of weapons lost, supposedly, by the Pentagon. And we know ISIS was funded by the Obama administration. So all this excuse that we went to Syria to fight ISIS was a just BS. But Trump fell for it. And he also started to drop these, you know, I don't know how many tomahawks, like, you know, dropping candies. Almost risking a World War III with Russia and China. They were there too. Then, finally, out of the blue, last week, we had to pull out of Syria. Great. We had to pull out of Afghanistan. Great. But I wonder why. There we have Mattis, General Mattis, Secretary of Defense, resigns. Why? So look at this now as a big picture. Don't you smell something that's happening? Maybe Trump now may know something that we don't know. Oh, by the way, there was also an important thing on the coast of California just last week, like uh, some sort of a meteorite exploding in the air. Maybe it wasn't a meteorite. Maybe it was a missile. Maybe we are already at war. We don't know. You realize that if Russia, China, North Korea, Cuba, they attack from every corner, and don't forget Venezuela and Iran from our southern border, Guatemala too, there are Marxists down there, and Mexico, of course, is not going to say no. They always wanted to. They always been helping. They always been helping during World War One and World War Two. The other side, okay, like the Germans. So we are surrounded. And Canada, don't forget now, Trudeau is a complete Marxist. He will allow any troops to go through. So we are alone. We are surrounded. And it's only question when they have the complete control and advantage to do not pay any consequences. If people think, oh, we have missiles, we have nuclear stuff, guess what? They have it too. Not only they have it too, they have also technology now to neutralize us. Neutralize not just uh, us civilians, they would be bad enough. You know the story, if we have an EMP on mass scales in your city, you cannot even drink any more water. You cannot even flush the toilet anymore without electricity. You realize that? You cannot even pump gas. How many hours would you last? How much... How long before in the city mayhem is going to start? And riots. So you have to look at this. Then all they need to do is that. After three days without water, people will go crazy. After three days with no gas, will be anarchy. And if there is an EMP, you cannot even have communication. So you're completely blind. Now, the military, same story. They may hack on the military too. Don't forget... Sorry for my nose, it's still running. Don't forget, there was a news just a few few weeks ago, every component in every computer that we have, in a, even in our government, there is a microchip that somehow even the big companies, American companies building this computer use this microchip from China, and they found out that it's like a Trojan horse. They can control, spy on every computer now. Okay? They have this source of a backdoor. So this situation can be very, very scary. If they can control technology and bring us back to World War III, excuse me, to World War II technology, man against man, we are gone. Our military it never have a chance. We're talking about what? One potential, one million, maybe two millions with a reserve of soldiers against potentially 20, 30 millions of well-trained soldiers. Remember, Russia and China, they are huge. China has one billion human beings hungry, brainwashed, and ready to fight. And out of that billion, of course, they can get at least 10 million soldiers, don't you think? So North Korea. So even if they be uh, not trained as well as ours, doesn't matter. At that point, they have a quantity, numbers. People may say, oh, we have uh, 20 million gun owners. Yes, I'm, that's great. That's why also the Democrats, they're trying to work around the way to completely disarm us, or at least to have some sort of a gun registration, so they know exactly who own guns. But still, even in the best ideal world that we have 20, 30 million gun owners, we are not organized, we are not as trained as we should to have a rifle, 20 rifles in your homes, 20 rifles in your home, doesn't make you a rifleman, doesn't make you a soldier. People say, yeah, we have a lot of veterans, yes, I agree. But let me tell you, also remind you one thing. You remember three years ago, I think I talked on the show, 
there was a, a bureaucrat from the VA. And by the way, well, he got arrested after, supposedly. Uh, he had a laptop, and he lost his laptop at the McDonald's, some sort of, 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 of fast food. He's, you know, he lost it, and in this laptop there were 20 million records, or at least every veteran that's still alive under the VA. Think the type of knowledge, what could do an enemy of this country with that knowledge, to know the names, the addresses, the medical condition, and the region, where they're located, each soldier, each veteran. That's right there. That's an act of treason. If some foreign country may have that type of knowledge, that, that would be the first thing an occupying force would do. Go and collect all these people and dispose them. That's you need to look at this. This is all real. This is not conspiracy. I want to get you a little uh, get a little break. I got to you know my nose is kind of plugged as you can hear. I'm still recovering from this little cold, but I want to play some audio clips. After this, do not go away. You're listening to Love Guns and Freedom with Luca Zana. Don't go away. Are you ready to get lost in lust? Immerse yourself in a thunderstorm of emotions and passion. Order John Luca Zana's new book. Perfectly crazy. 69 erotic visions and love poems with forbidden erotic Italian phrases. Perfectly crazy by Gianluca Zana. Available all over the world at Amazon.com and www.zana.us. Well, you know, in the last, what, eight or ten months, the market has uh, taken a turn down. It's been down 10% or so. And I think it's a very vulnerable position because uh, when markets are destined uh, to make big corrections, as I believe, they don't do it from the top. They do it from 10 to 15 percent down. So we're at that position. So once this volatility shows that we're not going to resume the bull market, then people are going to rush to the exit. So I suspect that we're at a very, very precarious point where people are going to say, hey, <laughs> you know, there, there's something wrong going on. And I am not optimistic that all of a sudden you're going to eliminate uh, the tariff uh, problem. I think that's a here to stay. I don't think the tariff man is going to give up. The downturn that you're forecasting in the market, how bad do you think it'll be? You know, looking back uh, in terms of history, is there anything you can compare it to? Well, you know, I, I just think it's uh, there's no sign that it's going to be mild. Uh, and it depends on what the government does. If you allow the liquidation, it doesn't last long. I would advocate, you know, allowing it to liquidate itself like in 1921. No, I think it could be worse in 1929. And uh, because they, we can't keep our hands off, we prop it up. It's like taking drugs. And I think all this QE bailout was just loading up for the drugs. It was so dependent on free money. But unfortunately, what happens is the money doesn't get distributed fairly, and that's why you have social chaos, and that's why you have socialists making headway in the elections because of the maldistribution. We don't have a market economy, and I get very annoyed when they say, see, Ron, that free market stuff, it doesn't work. Look at the terrible situation we have here, and uh, that is the reason why I think it's so important to understand the original cause and the problem, and that is the Federal Reserve running up debt and letting politicians spend money and having conservatives when they get in office and control the government, they're worse than the Democrats because they're, they're totally dependent on it. And that was uh, former Congressman Ron Paul uh, pretty much articulating in a, in a more scientific way than normally I do what's going on with the economy and what is the real problem, you know, also. So um, before I go ahead, you know, I don't promote enough uh, what I do here. And the reason why I do this is because I remind you, nothing is free. Differently from the attitude that the government tried to make us believe, you know, you get free stuff. No, everything has a price, especially when it's not uh, supported by, uh, let's say, extorted tax dollar. Uh, the station itself, for example, K-Tox. K-Tox uh, needs help. Uh, needs help, you know, it's, it's, it's a private business. So I want to say, if you appreciate this show, especially if you're local in the tri-state area, support K Talks, support, uh, his, his sponsors. That's number one thing. Regarding my show, it's an independent show. You know, I've been using, uh, working with K Talks for five years, more than five years now. But I'm everywhere. I'm also on the internet and it's my own show. So I don't work for K Talks. I'm an independent producer. I want you, I need your help. 
You know, this is my form of love. You see, yes, I take my time out of my personal life, my personal business. I tell you, it's more than just an hour show. Even I, when I used to do three hours, it was like, oh my gosh, a production. But still, it takes me hours. So I appreciate if you can support the effort. You can do many things, like, for example, let's say you're around the world. You know, you don't even need to be uh, buying coffee or a tissue or anything I pr- produce or make. You know, even just a digital. You can go to www.zanna.us. And you can see all my songs. I have more than a 100 songs. You can digitally, digitally download. Or if you're on Amazon, even easier. Put my name, Gianluca Zanna. You can also find my latest book. This is uh, uh, Perfectly Crazy. I just played before the little uh, audio spot. It's a, it's an erotic book. If you are a person kind of, you know, moralist and, you know, you think you're going to hell if you read about sexuality, don't read it. Don't buy it. Okay. Spare you the money. But if you believe in freedom and you kind of, you know, enjoy life, guess what? It's a great book. That's all I can say. Uh, anyway, beside that, beside that, I want to talk now a little bit about different things. They are all connected, by the way. President Trump, I've been supporting every time he's been doing something that I genuinely believe that was about defending the sovereignty of this nation. When every time he does something that, hey, he wanted to build a wall, he wanted to stop this complete uh, uh, act of invasion from this uh, supposed to be 20,000, 30,000, whatever, I don't care if it's 10 invaders from Guatemala, uh, guess what, I, I was with him. Now there's a point that I start to have really serious doubts. And I tell you why, and will well, you tell me what you think. You don't need to agree with me, as you know. Let me finish my coffee first. One second. One second. I got my Zana coffee here. I need it, man. I need it. If I don't drink at least five of those during the day, I don't, I don't function. Zana coffee, organic coffee, the best coffee you can really enjoy. Go to www.zanacoffee.com. Anyway, what happened here? Finally, the ATF, this agency that's supposed to work under the Department of Justice, uh, they come out with the new, let's say, view of the bump fire stock, according to President, according to President Trump. Uh, you know, what is exactly the final end result? That President Trump, or at least in this case, the ATF, gave 90 days, Things is going to become officially uh, as a law or whatever. It's not even a law. As official enforcement by March, in 90 days, every owner of a bump fire stock must, in the next 90 days, destroy it, burn it, melt it, or, or give it to the ATF. Now, let's look why this is so scary. And I'm so disappointed with President Trump. Let me see why, okay? Um Number one, we have, you know, you may be President Trump supporter. You may be thinking that he's the best guy on the world. That's fine. That's fine. That's great. I'm not even saying that you don't have to do that. Do we believe one thing in common, that we have a constitution as the supreme law of the land, that the constitution is something that all these politicians, presidents included, they are swearing an oath. Before they take office. Think about it. If you agree with that, we're okay. We're on the same page. So right there we have a problem. Congress shall make laws. Not a president. People can say, oh, but it's just a Bob fire stock. Don't worry about it. Don't stress out. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. If now Congress is just useless, like by the way, under President Obama is being useless. He's done more executive orders than anybody. But now Trump is reinforcing this. We have now what is called a king. And people may say, oh, but it's after all, it's President Trump is good, he's going to take care of us. You know what? That's completely delusional if you think that. Now we need to think the next president can use the power of a pen to enforce an ideal, even just because maybe they believe, he believes that he's doing the right thing. Doesn't matter. Just because he doesn't agree with you, he still may believe the right thing. After all, the next president may say, hey, Bump fire stock, okay, President Trump did that. Now I say you don't need 30 rounds magazine after the next false flag or maybe just, you know, terrorist attack or maybe some crazy person using 30 round magazines. Uh, guess what? They can say we don't need 30 round magazine. I'm not going to wait for Congress. I will use the power as being used before by other presidents to make this 
magazines illegal. By the way, now if you get caught with a bump fire stock in the next 90 days, you become a felon. This is not just like a little fine and a slap on your wrist. You will become a felon because of a piece of plastic. Now, people may say, oh, but this bump fire stock, they're useless. Yes, they are useless. Honestly, I really couldn't care less about fire stock for self-defense. It's, it's a joke. It's just recreational. I don't even believe it were even used for this sort of a Las Vegas massacre. It was even that. It was real machine guns, according to experts. I talked to, I also brought on the show. But the point is not that. The point now, the president has pretty much said, I make the laws. Number one. Number two, retroactive. These bump fire stocks, when they were bought, they were legal. So now, government is making a sample, is, is, excuse me, is making a case that they're going to make illegal something that they were legal before, and they demand you to completely surrender him or destroy him without compensation. Without compensation. This is something that belongs to uh, Communist Manifesto 101. is extortion. When they came and took the land, expropriating the land without compensation, the Bolshevik, that's what they did. I don't care if it's just 150 or $200, you know, uh, bump fire stock. It's the principle is the same. Don't you see that? Don't you see that? Now, the same people that are supporting President Trump and say, okay, we may not disagree, but this is like a chess game. There is nothing to be a chess game. There is nothing to be about tactical or to be, you know, brilliant. This is scary. This is scary what is done. I cannot forgive him for that. You know, now people may go to jail for a piece of plastic, a useless piece of plastic. That is an accessory. Yes. Doesn't matter. The principle we have here, a big violation of constitution, Bill of Rights. I mean, I'm, I'm a freaking immigrant, okay? Or at least I was. If I can understand those basic things, why you, born, raised, America, don't you get it? Some of you, some, many of my listeners, they're smart, but I'm sorry, sorry, some people that consider themselves conservatives, when come to President Trump, they, you know, they, they would completely, you know, give their wife away for the first night of sex. To treat President Trump. I mean, you're like under a spell, guys. Seriously. I, I, I don't have a problem with President Trump. I always support him when he does the right things. But we, not, we, we cannot be partisanship here. We cannot be in love with the idea of, of this figure like, like a superman, like a superhero. He's a freaking president. We must judge him by his actions. Not for what we dream or what we, we believe that he could be. This is serious. This is serious. The president's credit is bigger than a bump fire stock. Now, remember, this wars. The next two years, when we have the new president, and I believe, unfortunately, I don't think he's going to make it, but we'll see. I don't know. When the next president eventually will come, President Trump will be gone. Remember this executive order. All they need is an excuse, another false flag. They can ban anything they want at that point. All right? So that's the point. Now, talking about President Trump, because I need to say, you know, consistent, I'm not partisan here. I have no any type of membership or cards, you know, Republican Party, any card. I believe in the Constitution. This is my card. The truth is my card. President Trump did a great show, or at least what it looks like real, but, you know, this $5 billion uh, dispute, or at least challenge between him, Pelosi, and the other piece of scum they call Senator Schumer, to try to get this five mere pathetic $5 billion that we waste so many billions of dollars for other stupid things, you know, but so partially we are in government shutdown because Senate, you know, and the, and the Democrats don't want to give $5 billion. Fine. I'm all with that. Shut down the government. I'm with that. I'll play shut down for a long time. Maybe we get a break. We can live better life, I believe. But meanwhile, all that show for $5 billion, meanwhile, the United States government is pledging, this is according to Associated Press News, $10.6 billion for Central America, Southern Mexico. Are you kidding me? Hey, don't forget... $38 $38 billion to Israel. This is, for me, something that's... Uh, wait a second. Wait a second. Let me, let me think now. We have problems to find 
$5 billion for what I think it's a basic concept of national sovereignty to control our borders. Simple as that. But we can, we are forced to give $10.6 billion to another nation. And I say forced, we as a taxpayer, I found that an insult. I found that a robbery. There is supposed to be no one dollar, no one dime supposed to go to other nation. If they have problems, they need to take care of their own problems. We have problems. We have millions of people. They're living just, you know, working three jobs. And not even having any more a middle class. The basic American dream is gone. We have people on the streets. We have veterans killing themselves. We have veterans just last week, you know, a colonel um, killed himself in the VA parking lot. He couldn't wait six months for going crazy through all the paperwork and disgraceful system of government administrated healthcare. We have people living on the streets. We have poverty. We have kids. They still don't go to eat. Don't eat at night. They go to, to sleep without dinner, dinner, without food. And we are giving billions around the world, but we cannot get five billion for our southern border. So I don't know, President Trump. I start to believe maybe this is also part of the show too. How can you be part of it? How can you somehow support thirty-eight billion dollars to Israel? At the same time, we cannot get $5 billion for our borders. So, I have these concerns. I don't know yet exactly how much of President Trump is real. All I know that one thing is real. This executive order for the, fi- uh, the banning of a bump fire stock was his. Nobody else. Nobody else. And by the way, the NRA, they are part of this shameful day for the rights of the gun owners of America. Not only they are not fighting back differently from the guns owners of America organization that is challenging in court. The NRA was part behind it. They supported it. Like they support many other bad things in the history. And you know, funny thing, because you know, I'm an NRA instructor. Uh, to teach my Arizona concealed carry permit classes, I have to get my NRA certification. And I did the classes because I, I like to be, you know, I'm an instructor and NRA. I always like to learn everything. But I despise them now. I do despise them. I'm sorry. I, and if you hear me, I, I hope you hear me clear. You are a sellout. You are a Judas God. I remember 13 years ago when I challenged you, I was becoming a life member. Life member. And then I found out that you have a website in two languages. Spanish and English. And I ask, you know, as a former immigrant, just fresh American, say, wait a second, I'm an Italian, born, but I'm an American now. Why do you have to pander for a specific group? Why you have to put this website, and by the way, it's paid by our membership in two languages. If you really believe in this crap, that you want to be multicultural, I disagree with that, first of all. Our Bill of Rights is written in English. And every new American, or everybody who cherishes the Bill of Rights and the Constitution in our American way of life, should speak English. I don't care which accent, like mine, poor grammar, doesn't matter, we speak English. So when you apply for your membership, or when you want to know about the NRA, guess what? Straight, keep it straight, English only. And then I said, you know, if you really want to go that route, you should put also a website version in Italian, in Chinese, in German, and many other languages because we have immigrants coming from around the world. You know what? I also met Mr. Lapierre at a book signing in Las Vegas to talk about this thing. And he told me, oh, don't write me, write me, write me. Yeah, they wrote me back. You know what they told me? If you don't like it, just leave. Send a letter of resignation. And I did, and I did. And that was the principle, just one aspect of their politically, you know, pandering, like, you know, the GOP pretty much. It's just a political machine. My opinion, they narrate what, besides there are some good people out there, especially in the base, but they control the, to, the top. It's a system to control the opposition. It's a system that you control a group like the NRA. All you have to do is control the top. You can control a lot of people. That's what they are. That, when I change my mind, that's fine. I don't care. The point is, they, they are behind this bump fire stock. And they're supposed to be screaming for us. Instead, they are not. Now, other things important. Something, you know, I don't know if you heard about this uh, Morocco. Very sad story in the mountains of Atlas, Morocco. Those two beautiful young women from Sweden, or, excuse me, Norway. Uh, they went there because they thought, you know, 
all these kumbaya, we all brothers and sisters. This ladies, by the way, I watch also I read the news that they believe in this multiculturalism, and you know, then they were all for this open society, no borders. Uh, yes, uh, these poor Muslim, they are just here to integrate. You know, guess what? Two single ladies, blonde. Not because blonde means anything, but when you're blonde in a place that everybody's brown, sorry, you're gonna stick out pretty well. Okay. Uh, guess what? They got murder, cold blood with the head chopped. On video, I watched the video. I like to watch this video. You know why? Because it reminds me what we are facing. That, by the way, that video, it is not even some sort of, I say, oh my, this must be extreme Muslims. Guess what? This is exactly what the Quran tells you. Whenever you find the infidels, go there and cut their throat. Should I read you the, the, the part of the Quran? Go there and figure it out. There is that in their book. I mean, let's not forget that uh, uh, Muhammad, he chopped, I think, at least 600 heads of Jews and different enemies. This religion, or whatever you want to call it, cult, it's founded on violence. So that's nothing new. People say, oh, this is just some extreme work of some extreme. No, these are just a perfect, ideal Muslim. They are following the steps of the Prophet. And the sad thing, these, these young ladies, it's, it's, it's kind of, you know, it's, it's almost like uh, the survivalists of the feet. If now people, a nation is so brainwashed, they will pretty much commit suicide. That's what they're doing. That's what happened. What's happening in Sweden? That's what's happening in Norway. That's what's happening in Germany. They brainwash the masses to believe this fairy tale that we all must get along, that we all gonna be compatible, that we're all the same. No, we are not. No, we are not. I'm sorry. I wish, I wish, I wish to have every human being in front of me that we could have a conversation, a disagreement, and still get along. No, there is a point, and I didn't say that. There is also the a famous Buddhist monk, the Dalai Lama, Dalai Lama. He said, the Muslims, they're not compatible. Sorry, they need to go back to their countries. Or they call them a racist. Guess what? This is the fact. And I say, yeah, that's their country. But I wouldn't go there. I wouldn't send my son or my daughters there, for, especially for a vacation, alone. If you want to go and check out the video, it's up to you. I'm not going to play it. Uh, I wouldn't play it, uh, the, this very gruesome screaming of this young woman. This young woman screaming, why this, 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 uh, this uh, subhuman, because it's a subhuman. They are no human beings for me. They are less than animals. Chopping, cutting with a kitchen knife, the, the throat and the head, severing the head out of the body on video. I watch it because I have to watch this. I have to remind myself reality that we are facing. I cannot ignore it. It's out there. This is real. This is real. That's what I say, you know, there is no, there is no, there is no uh, uh, compatibility with this cult. This cult, unfortunately, even the people that they consider themselves uh, moderate, they will come and take over by votes. And then by votes, they will start to regulate your life according to their belief. That's the scary thing. Okay? And then, of course, there is the other side, the final side, the Sharia law, that's the next step. And the next step, if you don't believe, you have three options. One, you pay a tax and you become a slave, like a Dima. The other one, you submit and you become one of them, not a zombie, bloody zombie. And the third one, you die. They chop your head. That's pretty much the story. Okay, so that's all I can say. Even in Sweden now there are some, you know, Swedish doctor of theology, Islamism is evil, and it's time we change our attitude. Hopefully it's not too late, lady. You're already pretty much screwed, surrounded, invaded, okay? It's like a cancer, it doesn't go away once it's in. That's the reality. Now, something I want to share with you, uh, you know, I'm broadcasting from Kingman Force of Force, here in Kingman, Arizona, is a self-defense training facility. And what we do here, we don't just do firearms training. We don't just do empty hands training for self-defense, of course. Nothing that we do here, it's for just recreational or just for, let's say, target shooting. No, when we do classes for shooting, for self-defense, 
When we do empty hands, it's not for competition. It's for self-defense. I just put out uh, manuals. I'm putting out manuals for each curriculum we teach. Yes, that's what I spend. That's why I get up in the morning at 4 o'clock and I write these curriculums and I work you know, with professionals to also be sure that we get the best information out there. For the empty hands, by the way, curriculum that we have, it's called Empty Hands Real Life for Self-Defense Level 1. I work with uh, my main chief empty hands instructor, Mr. Kale. And uh, you can download this book. You can go to kingmanforsonforce.com for $4.99. It's there in the shopping cart. And it's a very nice manual. And by the way, we'll get also the video going up next week or so for each technique we teach in level one. Coming level two soon. Why this manual is so important? Because I tell you, you may need this technology, technology, these techniques, these, these skills, how to defend yourself wherever you are in the world, especially in countries like, you know, Europe, that you have no right to keep and bear arms. You better start to learn at least how to defend yourself with your hands, with your mind, the most important weapon, your mindset, your combat mindset. And, of course, techniques you need to know how to punch, how to kick, how to, you know, use every part of your body to defeat evil. These two young little ladies, they were camping out in the middle of the mountains, by themselves, sleeping. They got caught in the middle of the night, 3 o'clock at night. These three bastards, these three subhumans who were somehow, ch- you know, following them, they were, par- you know, camped just 600 yards away. So the way that they were sleeping, and bang, they probably also abused them, and then they tortured them, and they killed them. Like, you know, even, a, you know, even a, an animal would be killed like that. When you kill an animal, you give him some dignity. You cannot just torture him like that. That was disgusting. So I said, please, please, go there, kingmanforsonforce.com, and download the book. $4.99. Now, now they think, this is a gift, Christmas gift I do for everybody out there. Every gun owner. I don't care where you are. I believe if you have a gun, if you own a gun, if you carry a gun, or even if you don't like guns, we agree on one thing, hopefully. Safety. It's a responsibility that belongs to everybody. So I wrote a book. It's a little manual, but it's very well informative. It's called The Gun Safety Book. The Gun Safety Book that is also free. The free gun safety book. It's free because I, I really mean it. This is, I, I share this love for freedom, and I believe that with freedom comes responsibility. I wish every gun owner could become more responsible. So this book is all about how to become familiar in safety with every firearm, not just a handgun, uh, also rifles, a shotgun, anything between. Please, go to kingmanforsonforce.com or send me an email, zana at zana.us. Or even better, I'll give you the magic word, freegunsafety.com. Freegunsafety.com, and you can download the book free. I don't even ask you for your email. Think about it. Now, if you like the book, if you find it worth it, you can always help me out. You know, I, after all, I put a lot of hours to do these things. You can go on Amazon or just go to zana.us, plug my name, on Amazon or iTunes and download any of my songs. You know, I wrote more than 100 songs. They are there. Share them with your friends. Maybe send them as a gift. Maybe buy one of my CDs. Buy my erotic poems book. Do something. Don't be cheap. I give free stuff out there because I love you. But at the same time, I'm still a human being. I have bills to pay. So I appreciate your help. I really do. Now, said that, said enough. I want to play today to close a song. You know, I talked at the beginning about this uh, fear, or at least these uh, dreams, nightmares that I had 20 years ago about China invading U.S. And uh, Red Wave, Red Wave is the song I like to play today with you. And I hope this was just a song. I hope that uh, it's never going to happen. I hope to be wrong. God's willing, I wish you a Merry Christmas, a Happy Yule, Merry Yule, and whatever Merry you believe, wherever you are around the world. Peace and love to you and your family. You've been listening to Love, Guns, and Freedom. We look at that. Ciao, and God's willing, I'll talk to you next Sunday.